Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. The Fermi Paradox is the contradiction between the high probability and statistical likeliness of there being intelligent life in our massive galaxy, and the general lack of proof and clues we've been able to discover so far of this intelligent life. Now there's been plenty of theories and arguments about why this is, but one of the more recent explanations really caught my attention. It's written by Alexander Berezin, a theoretical physicist at the National Research University of Electronic Technology in Russia. His theory piggybacks other papers that state that all advanced civilizations will continue to seek unrestricted expansion and growth until it has completely conquered the entire galaxy. This is a logical conclusion because any advanced species that has evolved this far most likely has built in survival mechanics and spreading out your civilization is one of the best ways to ensure your survival. What makes Berezin's theory unique is that he states the reason why humanity has not encountered any aliens yet is because humanity is in fact one of the most advanced species already in the galaxy. Meaning we are the aliens from Independence Day, the future invaders of other sentient beings. It's a bit far-fetched, but it's also a beautiful idea, something I like to think about. I mean, wouldn't it be cool if humanity became one of the first interstellar empires in the galaxy? Not only would it ensure our survivability, it would also allow us as a human race to dictate the future of this galaxy. And as you all know, I believe thoroughly in the natural good inside of all human beings. It's the one spark that separates us from lesser beings. Now, Berezin's theory is just the theory. We actually have no idea what's out there. But we are currently at a very crucial period in our history with rapid advancements in automation, space travel, and energy. This next century, we'll see humanity finally reach beyond the boundaries of our own planet as we begin exploring and colonizing and hopefully subjugating life on nearby planets. Now, we are heading into unknown territory, but there are plenty of tools at our disposal. The entire science fiction genre, despite being seen mainly as entertainment, remains one large depository of basically thought exercises of what may lay in store for humanity. Now, I'm not saying that science fiction should be our first major source for future research on what we should do. It nonetheless still remains a very important resource that we can occasionally look at. Which is why today I want to talk about five lessons that we've learned from science fiction that will prepare Earth for its future wars against other species. Gunpowder Moon is a novel set in the not-so-far future, where competing world governments have effectively colonized different parts of our celestial satellite, and have begun extracting helium-3 for future fusion reactors. The problem is we have not conquered the moon as a single human race, instead we have arrived on the moon as individual nation-states. Worse yet, we've brought our pre-existing conflicts and grudges from Earth to the stars. What results is a massive loss in production and a waste of resources through warfare on the moon. Now we here on Earth see war as a necessary evil. Throughout the ages, despots and lunatics have risen and tried to dominate the Earth and needed to be stopped. For human beings to be fighting each other as we're colonizing space is incredibly stupid. This is because as we increase our footprint beyond our own solar system, we begin attracting attention from alien species. Therefore, as we become known to the rest of the galaxy, we also have to rapidly increase our defensive capabilities. We really can't spend too much time killing each other. So if we are going to make it to this next stage of human evolution, the idea of nations must be left behind on Earth. Now that's easier said than done because currently there are a lot of good arguments for nationalism and there are a lot of good arguments against globalization. Especially in today's social and political climate, there isn't really a vehicle or platform that could possibly create the type of global unity we all deserve especially now that we are entering the fourth industrial revolution and people across the world are seeing their jobs and well-being taken away from them by the double-edged sword that is progress and automation, which is honestly the root cause of all of this growing unrest. The only thing that we can really hope for is that our fellow man will reject tribalism and also make decisions based on rationale instead of emotions. Because when the Covenant first raised the human colony of Harvest, we only survived the war that followed because of the United Nations Space Command Fleet. And when the Turian Hierarchy started the first contact war and conquered the human world of Shanxi, it was the Systems Alliance that took it back. And lastly, when humanity finally wiped out the bugger threat, it was the heroic unified humans of the interstellar fleet that went crashing into the Formic homeworld. So if we are going to reach for the stars and paint a giant target on our backs, we got to make sure that humanity is ready for the threats that will come. We have to be unified. 
Reach served as the hub for the outer colonies of humanity and was one of the most heavily defended planets outside of our home solar system, along with a defensive fleet of over 100 ships were 20 orbital mech gun platforms that could deliver punishing firepower. But as we now know, the battle for Reach was over before it even started. The Covenant being on the attacking side brought a fleet several times larger than the UNSC was able to field. The humans simply had to defend too many colonies and their fleet was spread out. And because the battle was being waged over Reach, even if the UNSC were able to push back the fleet, large portions of the surface of the planet and most of the infrastructure were destroyed in the process. It would be a Pyrrhic victory at best. During the Reaper invasion of Earth and the Formic invasion of Earth, our planet also suffered greatly because we had failed to intercept an invasion fleet before it reached the planet. I mean, static defense is really the last line of defense. And by this point, when you're talking about interplanetary warfare, you've most likely failed because of the sheer destructive power of these weapons. Space will represent a unique problem for the future Earth Defense Force because of its 3D nature. The potential of approach vectors will be unlimited. What humanity will need to do is to set up a network of probes and listening posts and scouting stations all around our territory. The earlier warning we have, the more likely we'll be able to intercept an enemy fleet before it's close enough to do any damage. This will be far more cost effective than creating massive defensive fleets and surrounding certain systems or planets. Now, if we do contact aliens in the near future, I do hope that we contact them far away from our home solar system. The less our potential enemies know about us and where our home world is, the better. That's really our best advantage. Space is huge and it'll take quite a lot of time to find just one planet. This is why during the Human Covenant War, one of the most important UNSC directives was for ships to erase their star charts before they were about to get captured. This was so that the location of Earth could never be found. One of the biggest limitations we see in the world of Warhammer 40k, which is more science fantasy, I guess, is the unreliability of FTL travel and more importantly, communications. Without a proper infrastructure established, the Imperium of Man was a rather segmented and divided empire. This meant that while some Imperium worlds are covered in factories and advanced megacities, other Imperium worlds might still be full of tribal nomads. Also, sometimes a human colony would get attacked and no one would know about it until hundreds of years later. In the novel Earth Unware, which covers the events leading up to the First Formic War, a communication blackout with the outer edge of the solar system leaves Earth completely blind to the fact that there was an enemy fleet approaching our home world. It was up to individual ships serving as couriers to rush to Earth to warn humanity about the coming invasion. Without some kind of FTL speed communication system, it won't matter if you have a huge network of listening posts and scouting stations if the enemy can move faster than your communications can. The problem I see with a lot of the alien apologists that like to comment in our videos is they automatically assume that the aliens we will face will be like us and full of humanity, or perhaps even more enlightened than us. This is laughable and dangerously misguided. While humanity first can be extreme at times and could be considered xenophobic, in reality, we're just trying to be truthful and more importantly, be realistic. If we encounter an enlightened race of pacifist aliens, that would be great. If we can communicate and create some basic understanding, including finding some common moral ground, then we can develop a meaningful relationship with that species. I mean, that's the best case scenario though. Why launch missiles at someone when you can sell the missiles, am I right? But the truth is, if we do run into an alien race, there's really no guaranteeing that they won't be hostile. And the consequences of not being prepared in that situation could mean the end of our entire species. It's really not a risk I'm willing to take. Now, a lot of alien apologists also state that humanity is evil and up to no good. But the truth is, we don't really have any scale to compare ourselves to. There simply aren't any other sentient beings on this planet that we can compare ourselves with and say that we are more or less evil then. And what's probably more troubling is that on Earth, the most intelligent animal species are also perhaps the most vicious. Dolphins, for instance, are famous for their rape culture and are amongst one of the few animals on Earth that also play with their prey before killing them. Chimpanzees, even with their advanced social structure, murder each other all the time and commit infanticide. And that's because only humans had developed the idea of morality here on Earth, and that was the product of millions of years of evolution. But to say that aliens from a completely different part of the galaxy, from a completely different world, will have the same evolutionary path as us, 
is very stupid. If we look at Ender's game, the Formics were not evil or good creatures, but simply an alien species that was doing what any animal does, and that is expand its foothold on the galaxy to increase its chance of survival. When the Formics first began bioforming China and killing millions of people, there was no malicious intent. They simply saw us, human beings, as local fauna and a bit of a nuisance. With alien races like the Formic, and this is one of the rare times I actually disagree with Ender Wickens, the complete destruction and annihilation of their species was completely necessary. And the Formics still weren't all that bad, they were actually able to communicate with us as we found out after we wiped them out. Because there are even more terrifying and destructive alien races like the aliens from Aliens, or the Zerg, or the bugs from Starship Troopers, or the Tyranids, or the Yuzang Vong. The last thing we really need is alien apologists making first contact for us and putting us at a disadvantage. So this is the discussion we really need to have with alien apologists because, you know, you can't really just assign virtue to aliens because you want them to be peaceful. That's an incredibly dangerous thing to do. We, of course, should practice restraint in a first contact scenario, but always be prepared to blast those godless Xenos back to whatever hole they crawled out of. Well, there you have it, guys. Five lessons we've learned from science fiction that can be applied to our own first contact scenarios that we one day will have to face. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie, and you are the protagonist.